I'm here with our College Tell with Mrs. Bell series. Today we are going to be talking to Salisbury University. I have with me Mr. Eli Maudlin, Chief of Staff and Director of Government and Community Relations for Salisbury University. Good morning, Eli. Good morning, Laurie, and thank you so much for having us. It's our pleasure, believe me. So you have quite a title on your name there, Chief of Staff and Director of Government and Community Relations. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the university? Sure, so the way that I would describe my role uh, largely is the chief connector. Um, at, at our institution, the chief of staff works in the president's office and helps to support that office, but my job is really to support the entire institution and to help make connections for the students, faculty, and staff. And um, I also serve as our liaison with the government, our state government, local government, and federal government officials, as well as our community. We're a regional higher education institution and our work in the community is extremely important. So I help us to lead and coordinate those efforts as well. Sounds like a really fun yet interesting job. It seems yeah, like it changes frequently for you. No, no two days are the same, that's for sure. How did you, what did you have to do to get such a position? What kind of schooling did you need? How did you go after this job? So I'm a proud Salisbury University alum. Um, I graduated and took a job um, with our state comptroller, um, who's an elected official. And um, my, my boss there, actually the comptroller's chief of staff, used to be Salisbury University's director of government and community relations. Um, so I learned a lot there. I worked with a great team. And then um, I was given the opportunity to come back to Salisbury as the deputy chief of staff and director of government and community relations, um, and, and then eventually became the chief of staff more recently. I studied political science and communications at Salisbury and benefited from a holistic education at SU. We believe in educating the students both inside and outside of the classroom. And it gave me the opportunity to interact with government officials, interact with community members so that frankly, when I took the job, I was able to hit the ground running because of the relationships um, that we had built from going to SU. And you know, I'm a former teacher and I've always said, it's all about the relationships that you build right. with students. So if you're building those relationships with your students and in your community, it does give you a lot of confidence to start something new. That's absolutely right. So we're talking about Salisbury University today. Can you tell us about Salisbury itself, about where it's located, number of students you have, maybe some diversity, what's the population like? Give us a little bit of background if you would, please. Sure, so Salisbury University is on Maryland's Eastern Shore. We're pretty close to everything. We're, we're very close to the beach. We're only about a half hour's drive away from Ocean City, which is pretty popular. Um, but we're also two hours away from Baltimore, Washington, and Philadelphia. So we really have access to some of the major metropolitan areas of the region, but we're a little bit far enough away from them that we don't have the traditional congestion and, and, and things like that. So I think we have the best of both worlds. And quite frankly, our students get to take advantage of the opportunities because of where we are. Um, and, and we even have an airport in Salisbury. Um, we have 8,700 students roughly, about a thousand of those students are graduate students. Um, and this year, uh, Salisbury actually welcomed our largest and most diverse incoming freshman class in the history of the institution. Um, so we're very proud of that and proud of the progress that we're making as far as the student body um, as a whole, and as well as bringing in students from more diverse backgrounds, whether that be uh, regional, ethnic, um, various backgrounds, because we do believe that the diverse student population and faculty and staff population makes for a better learning experience. I believe it does as well. It, it gives people a chance to learn about other people, people that That's aren't right. necessarily just like them, and it makes our world a better place. That's right. What are some of the most popular majors at Salisbury? So uh, we have some majors that are very popular in nursing, exercise science, communication arts, which was my major, psychology, biology, marketing, management, um, social work, elementary ed, and finance. Those round out our top majors. Um, we have five schools or units, as we call them, and they include the School of Education, School of Liberal, the, the Fulton School of Liberal Arts, uh, the College 
of Health and Human Services, the Purdue School of Business and the Henson School of Science and Technology. Um, so we're very proud to have endowed schools. That, that's a point of pride for Salisbury University. And if I can just take an opportunity to brag, um, our nurses have the best pass rate on the NCLEX, that's the nursing licensure, licensure exam in the state of Maryland. So we're really proud of those students, but we have some pretty, pretty cool programs and, and great schools at Salisbury University. What a neat thing to hear about the nursing students. That is something to be very proud of. Okay. And you know, in the world we live in right now, nursing is a very, very needed profession. That's right, that's right. And I'll just say, we are also a high producer of teachers in the state of Maryland, which I know has a special place in your heart. And we were founded as a teacher's college. Uh, that's where Salisbury's roots are when we were originally founded. Very nice. Yes, I have to say teaching has a very soft spot, spot in my heart. I spent 31 years teaching. So yes, and I can relate to all those new teachers coming out of school. It's right. They're going to be having an interesting time this year too. I would say so. So, you know, the kids can't really come and see the campus and they and they don't really know what questions to ask. So what can you tell us about applying to the colleges? What kind of things do you look for in an applicant? A lot of our students are worried about SAT scores and ACT scores and what's going to happen. So what can you tell us about that? So the first thing I would point you to is the website. You know, you mentioned not being able to see campus and that's really unfortunate because we do have a beautiful campus. Mm -hmm. um, but with that said, we have virtual tour opportunities. We're doing virtual admission sessions, virtual open houses, where you have the opportunity to interact with not only the admissions teams, but also teams from student affairs and the academic side of the house as well. So I would encourage you to visit the website. You can apply there um, and learn about the different uh, applicate the, the parts of the process. Um, Salisbury University really takes a holistic approach when looking at it for students. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I didn't have the best SAT scores or the best GPA, um, but Salisbury looked at the various activities I was involved in and, and they want students that are not only going to benefit from an education at Salisbury University, but that are going to be engaged and involved and help the institution grow and help their students grow as, as learners, but also as members of society. So I encourage uh, potential students to, to take a look around and to apply and talk to an admissions counselor. We're calling students and we're letting you call us, obviously. We want to talk. We want to tell you about how you can benefit from Salisbury University and, and make sure you know all that we have to offer. And that things are still happening, even though it's virtual. We are fully operational. We've made very clear we are not closed. We are doing things in a different way, but we are open and we want to talk to you. That's absolutely right. What do you think makes your school different than any other school? What makes Salisbury so special? So there are things that you know people point to often, the faculty to student ratio, um, the environment, but to me, it, it goes back to something we talked about a little bit earlier, and that's the relationships. You know, we're not too big, not too small, 8,700. That, that means there are about 10,000 people on our campus. But, you know, it, it's truly amazing to see the, the faculty mentoring, the way that staff and faculty care about the students. Um, it, it's personal for them. You know, it, I don't have to tell you, again, being a teacher, our faculty and staff, they're doing this because they love the work and they care about the work, they care about the mission of our institution and they care about the students. And I think that shows through from the president of the university on down, um, the faculty and the staff, they care and they really support our students. Again, both inside and outside of the classroom and they help to build those relationships. And because the students have that experience, it extends to the alumni. Um, and you see alumni giving back both philanthropically, but also with their time and their talents. Our alumni are very engaged in helping students to find work, including myself. I'm, I'm a prime beneficiary of that. Um, so I think it, it's the people that make SU so special. Um, you know, we have all the other things that that are that you would want in a university. I will say we have the top five dining service in the country. So you're going to eat well at Salisbury University. And um, I was a beneficiary of that for sure. We have amazing newly 
renovated dormitories. We have great athletics. Um, we, we are multinational champions. I think sometimes even I took that for granted. Um, that if you're at Salisbury University, you're watching some great athletics. Um, you're watching some great cultural and, and, and various art performances, but it all comes back to the people and how much the people care about the work that's taking place at Salisbury University. It does sound like a very inviting place to go. And if I were a student looking for a college, I would want to know that the teachers cared about my success. Yeah. yeah. That's very nice. Um, what advice do you have for students right now that are maybe thinking about college, struggling with what they're going through now, planning for their future? What, what advice would you give a student now? Sure. So, you know, now more than ever, I recognize that college, uh, the choice of a college is very difficult. Um, I, I would encourage students to think about how close we are to things. You know, if, if you're considering not wanting to be so far away from home that Salisbury is just a drive away. Um, and also, I, I want you the students to know that we're going to work with you when it comes to finances. Um, there's a lot of financial uncertainty right now uh, because of the current uh, situation. And we want to work with students. We don't want folks or, or students to have to put off college or not go to college because of the financial straits that they're in related to this situation. So I, I just encourage you to reach out again. It comes back to those people. Um, and that's what makes Salisbury special for our current students, faculty and staff. But it's also what we want to do to help you get to Salisbury. Um, our people are here to help. So a question just came up. Do you have any insights on what the fall might look like for our students? So the short answer is no, but um, Salisbury University, we're planning for various scenarios. Um, you know, we're not completely autonomous in what the fall will look like and that we are following the guidelines and the directives from the governor of Maryland. And we are part of the university system of Maryland. So we are following that guidance as well. But we are going to be prepared for whatever we can do in the fall, whether that's uh, partially online and partially in person. If we're in person and we're taking extra precautions for health and safety, um, we don't know exactly what the fall will look like, but we're going to be ready. And our faculty and staff are ready to support students in any way that they're asked. Very nice. I, having a son in college, I understand that we're up in the air too, wondering what's going to happen. Yeah. So I guess we just have to wait and see and be prepared for as much as we can be. Right. That's right. We are committed in whatever modality we are going to deliver education. We're committed to supporting our students and providing them with the best education possible. That's great to hear. I'm sure that will bring peace of mind to a lot of students. I hope so. Well, is there anything else you would like to add before our time is up? I just want to thank you again. Um, I encourage anyone interested to visit www.salisbury.edu. Um, it's a great place. Uh, to get an education. You, you truly get that holistic experience. I believe that all of our students learn how to live and lead better lives at SU. And, and, and I just don't think you could find a better school. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eli. It's truly been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you from uh, Maryland Business Roundtable for Education's Way to Be at Home series. This has been College Tell with Mrs. Bell. If you get the chance, try to look up our app the Way to Be app on our for our website. It's on any app store. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks again for having us. Thank you.